Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to the shortlist of the Romanian Masters of Mathematics 2024 problem M2. At first, let's take a look at the problem statement. We have given a positive integer a1 and now we recursively define a sequence an by an equals the sum from i equals 1 to n minus 1 of the greatest common divisor of n and ai. And this is defined for all n greater than or equal to 2. Our task is now to prove that a n plus 1 is less than or equal to a n for infinitely many values of n. This means that we have to find some values for n such that this quantity here on the right hand side is small. So all these greatest common divisors should be not too large. For achieving this, it would be convenient if n has a small number of prime divisors. So especially if we take n equals to p, a prime number, we have good chances for this right hand side to be small. To be more precise, we have that AP is equal to the sum going from i equals to 1 to p minus 1 of the greatest common divisor of p and AI. And now this greatest common divisor is equal to p if p divides AI and 1 otherwise. So this is equal to p times the number of times that p divides ai and now plus p minus 1 minus this number, so minus the number of times that p divides ai. We can rewrite this as p minus 1 times 1 plus the number of times that p divides ai. For convenience, I want to denote this quantity here from now on as cp. Taking a look at the set here, we can see that if our sequence ai is increasing, then all the values ai for i in the set are distinct multiples of p, and therefore one of them is at least cp times p. This seems quite promising because, as we can see by this calculation here, ap is also almost equal to p times cp. We want to do a more detailed investigation into this idea, and for this, let's assume that a n plus 1 is less than or equal to a n for only finitely many values of n. At first, we want to choose the prime number p in such a way that only the sequence members from a n on are divisible by p. So take p greater than the maximum of a1, a2, up to a n. Now we want to name the elements of the set. So take 1 less than or equal i1 less than i2 and so on, less than i cp less than p, such that p divides a i j. By our assumption that p divides none of the elements a1 up to a n, we know that i1 must be greater than n. And therefore, by our assumption here, we can directly conclude that a i1 less than a i2 less than and so on, less than AICP, and now this is less than AP. We already calculated the value of AP, and we especially see that this is less than P times 1 plus CP. Since all of these values here are divisible by P, this immediately implies that AIJ is equal to J times P. Unfortunately, this is not quite a contradiction, but it's actually a pretty sharp result. And now our next step is to maybe try to figure out some more things about the sequence to see if this is actually possible. When I solved the problem, this was the point where I plugged in some small values for A1 and tried to get a better understanding of the sequence. The first thing I realized is that all the sequence members become even. And that's the claim we want to prove now. For the proof, we at first realized that the value of A2 is equal to the greatest common divisor of 2 and a1, and therefore this is congruent to a1 modulo 2. Now we want to distinguish between odd and even values for n. Namely, if n is odd, we get that a n equals the sum from i equals to 1 up to n minus 1 gcd of n and a i. And now since n is odd, this gcd is just congruent to 1 modulo 2. And therefore, this is congruent to n minus 1, which is congruent to 0 modulo 2. In the even case, 
we see that a n, which is congruent to the sum here, is also congruent to the sum from i equals to 1 up to n minus 1 of a i, since this GCD has the same parity as a i. As we already figured out, a2 is congruent to a1, and therefore we can also start the sum here by i equals to 3. And now we see that if we do the proof by induction, then all of these values a i here are congruent to 0 modulo 2, and therefore by induction this is also congruent to 0 modulo 2. As opposed to this, we know that a i1 is equal to p. And now we want to bring this to a contradiction. And first of all, okay, let's take p also greater than 2, such that p is an odd prime number. Moreover, we want that i1 is not equal to 1 or 2. And therefore, let's just also write down the numbers a1 and a2 into this maximum to make sure that a1 is indeed greater than 2. And therefore, we get that a i1 is even, and especially a i1 is not equal to p. This is still not quite a contradiction because there is the case left that cp is equal to 0, so the index i1 just doesn't exist. And therefore, we can conclude from this argument that cp is equal to 0. And now, taking a look at the value of ap, we directly get that ap is equal to p minus 1. Doing the same argument for some prime number q greater than p, we also get that aq is equal to q minus 1. The last assumption we want to make on p is that p should be also greater than n, because then we know that the sequence ap, ap plus 1, and so on is increasing. And therefore, these two equalities here directly imply that ap plus 1 must be equal to p. This is a contradiction to our claim, and therefore our assumption was wrong, and hence we are done. <laughs>